everyone. My name is Ian Lake, and I'm here to share five best practices for writing type-safe, multi-module code with Navigation Compose. That's a lot. So let's just go step by step. The first step is in defining your screens. So if you think about the simplest single screen app, you could just put all of your content directly in set content. But as soon as you get more than one screen, it's going to make sense to move those out into separate methods. So best practice number one, define your screen in terms of the state it receives as input and the events that it outputs. Your screen shouldn't care if your data comes from a view model or it's just static state that you've created for an individual test. It also shouldn't care about who's receiving the events that it's sending out. This is just a generally good idea for any of your composables, but it's particularly important to make sure that each one of your screens is testable in isolation and works great with previews. Next, best practice number two, split up your navigation graph just like you split up your screens. Just like moving your entire app out of set content, your entire navigation graph, the definition of all the screens of your app, should also be split up down to that same per screen level. You do this by pairing your screen with a nav graph builder extension method. This layer fully separates the navigation specific code from the screen itself. And it gives, provides encapsulation around navigation specific concepts like routes, the unique identifiers for each screens, which should never leak outside of this individual file. This is also the same layer where you provide where the state actually comes from. For instance, from a view model scope to this individual screen. Events that can be handled at this individual layer get handled here. So for example, if you want to hand off an event to your view model, do that here, while other events that can't be handled at the individual screen layer need to be passed up a level to the navigation graph. Number three, build out only the public API surface that you need. Now, that single extension method provides all of the runtime verification, such that when you navigate to a destination using the nav controller, your arguments are correct, typed, and that all the required arguments are already there. Now, Navigation Compose doesn't generate the compile time type safe code for you yet, but that means that you get complete control over the type safe code you want on a destination by destination basis. This is the type safe code you put right alongside that nav graph builder extension method. So at minimum, this should include an extension on the nav controller, our stateful object that maintains the backstack that fully encapsulates how you reach that destination. Now, it could also be extended to provide a type safe wrapper around extracting arguments from your safe state handle for your view model. Now, this is where the Kotlin visibility modifiers really come in handy. By using internal, we separate out the internal implementation details of a module from the public API surface that that module provides to other modules. Now, the same concept of choosing the right visibility applies to modules that have multiple screens as well. This self-contained set of screens is called a nested navigation graph. This lets you roll up multiple screens into just a single nav graph builder extension that encapsulates all the screens as an implementation detail. The key part of this encapsulation is the navigation element that wraps all of those individual screens. Now think of this as one level up from our individual screen builders. Since we're in the same module, we can access our type safe methods and link these screens together in a totally type safe way that's transparent to any other module. Now this also gives us control over how we want to start that flow. For example, our nav controller extension that navigates to the whole graph might set up the right flags so that it's treated as a separate backstack when you're using a bottom navigation bar. That takes us to best practice. Number four, use your module structure to guide how to combine your graphs together. 
Your module structure and how you've decided to modulize your app already defines which modules have visibility to the public APIs for other modules. So that means navigating across modules is really just bubbling up those on-navigate events up to a level to the module that has access to both. So it's at that higher level where you have the nav graph builder from one module and the navigate method from the other module, both visible, that you can tie them together in a type safe way. Now, there's a lot more details to cover, so best practice number five, check out our updated documentation and see all these in practice in the, our sample app now in Android. Thank you. <laughs>